Not very long ago, Carrie and I started a Bible reading plan that we're doing together on the YouVersion app that you can get for phones, for tablets, computers. And if you haven't found it yet already to begin using it, let me encourage you to take a look. Here's what it looks like if you go to the App Store and search for it. But it's really an amazing app. It's got lots and lots of Bible translations. Uh, it's in different uh, languages. It's in different translations in English. Lots of good resources. It's got Bible reading plans that you can do short term, long term. It's got amazing teaching tools. It's some good videos. Lots of good things. But Carrie and I have chosen to do a Bible reading plan by Dallas Willard Ministries. It's called Hearing God Through the Year. It's just a 24-day plan, so it really is not very long, but it's giving some great insights on learning to hear God speak and what we need to do to get ourselves in a position to hear God and to be able to follow Him. Well, yesterday as we were going through it, one of the verses really began to stand out to me, Psalm 39, 7. And it was one of those times that I read the verse and I had to go back and read it again and keep thinking about it. And like I typically do, I wanted to know the context, so I went back a little bit farther. This is a psalm of David. Now notice what David says in this psalm, Psalm 39, back in verses 4 and 5. Lord, make me aware of my end and the number of my days so that I will know how short-lived I am. In fact, you have made my days just inches long and my lifespan is as nothing to you, Selah. Now, that, that term Selah is one that is a little bit confusing to the scholars, but it probably meant that the, the reader or the, the person hearing the psalm read would need to stop, take a pause, and ponder what they just heard. And I think that's good for David in that he's pondering how short his life really is. I mean, he says, God, you've made my life just like inches when I think about you and, and eternity. I, I'm, my life is really nothing. And it was just passing by in front of him very quickly. But then from that, notice what David goes on to in verses 6 and the first part of verse 7. He said, yes, a person goes about like a mere shadow. Indeed, they rush around in vain, gathering possessions without knowing who will get them. Now, Lord, what do I wait for? Now, keep in mind, this is David, King David. He literally had it all. He was king at this point. And so when you think about possessions, he had immense wealth. David was also known as an international warrior who could not be beaten. I mean, his empire had grown amazingly. And there were multiple countries that were having to pay tribute to him that David had defeated. So David had great fame, great honor, great power. And yet he was still left with that question, Now, Lord, what do I wait for? It's like David was saying, what am I waiting for that's still out there that, that I haven't achieved yet, that I haven't acquired yet, that I haven't done yet, that's going to help me really feel fulfilled, that's going to give me the meaning and purpose that I want, that I, that I want so deeply in life? What am I waiting for? When is it going to come? And David answered that question. Now, I didn't give you the rest of the verse. Let me give you the rest of verse 7 so you can see how David answered his own question. Here it is in the rest of verse 7. Notice David's question again. Now, Lord, what do I wait for? And he answered, my hope is in you. David realized that no matter how much he had acquired, how much his wealth was, how much his power was and fame and, and honor, none of that mattered if he was not walking with God. And that's what happened to his son, Solomon. Solomon had even more wealth than David, but Solomon lost it all. Not the wealth, but the enjoyment, the, the meaning, the fulfillment behind it because Solomon stopped, stopped walking with God. David knew if he wanted to keep finding himself, finding his purpose, his meaning in life, he had to walk with God. He had to say, God, the only thing that matters is you. My hope in all of life is you. You know, we hear that message a lot in church. I mean, you, you hear it preached. We hear it taught from the Bible. So many things, and yet somehow we, 
in our human nature seem to keep coming back to that same question David had. What am I waiting for? What is it that I yet have not acquired or yet have not achieved that's going to make me really find myself in this life, that's going to help me really feel fulfilled in life? You know, we, we think, well, maybe it's going to be getting the right job or the, the right job promotion. You know, <laughs> what I'm doing now, this just stinks. I really need to get something better that's going to make more money, and th then I'll be happy. Or maybe I just need to get that next level of education, or I need to achieve this next certification or that, that next thing that is done. Or how about this one? If I just won the lottery, man, I'd have all the money I need and life would be easy. My problems would go away. But you know, if you look at the people that were like David that have it all, it is rare to find anyone that has it all that is truly fulfilled inside. They always, we seem to always come back to that question, what? I'm still waiting for something. What is it? What am I missing that is still out there that is yet to come that's going to fill up this emptiness inside? We need to hear the message today that David said so long ago. And it's, it's a timeless message. It's not going to change. David found with all of his wealth, all of his power, all of his achievements, my hope, God, is still only in you. That's what it's going to always be because God is our creator. And even if we accumulate great wealth, great power, great achievements, that comes from God. And if I am not walking with God, if you are not walking with God, it doesn't matter how much you've achieved, how much you've accumulated, it is not going to fulfill you. It is not going to be what you truly are waiting for. So let me remind you, David's words, timeless words, God when I think about my life and how short it is, my hope, my hope is only in you. Thank you for being with me today.